When asked to describe what way the samurai is, I think the easiest way is that it's like one of those choose-your-own-adventure books that you read as a kid. Set in a fictional port town in Japan, you play as a nameless ronin who has just arrived as the conflict is breaking out. You're quickly introduced to the three major factions, the shogunate, the foreign powers of Great Britain, and the anti-foreigner group. It's up to you whose side to choose to help out, if any, as you spend your limited time in the game. I've been a fan of Acquire's Way of the Samurai series since the first game on the PlayStation 2. In a lot of ways, these games haven't changed much between iterations. They all begin with you creating your own nameless ronin before throwing you into a world full of choices and consequences. Even the combat feels similar across all of these games. Introduced in the first Way of the Samurai, the fourth game borrows the push and pull system. If an enemy is guarding, using forward moves can break their guard when they're not pulling away from you. The same is true for moves that use back plus attack motions. These attacks will stagger a blocking enemy or throw an enemy off balance for a counter attack. The second game used a parry system instead. After a little practice, you could easily parry and instant kill any unnamed enemies. And while I still enjoy the game to this day, I'm happy that Way of the Samurai 4 doesn't have this feature, even if it means boss fights can drag on too long. Though maybe I'm getting ahead of myself by looking to the past. Way of the Samurai 4 was initially released in 2011 on the PlayStation 3 in Japan, before making its way west in 2012. Developed by Acquire, who you may be familiar with if you played Tenchu 1 or 2, Way of the Samurai 4 makes its franchise debut on PC this week, courtesy of Ghostlight. When you first begin the game, you'll be asked to customize your character. As you play through the game, you'll have access to a ton of clothes and accessories that you can buy, but starting out you have next to nothing. Now I haven't explored this feature to its fullest yet, but just by looking at screenshots of characters that the publishers and other players have come up with, it's safe to say that you can do some wacky things. Once you've created your character, you can choose your difficulty setting and begin the game. After some initial story scenes, you're thrown into the world free to do as you please. Every day is unique, along with the events that can play out. This means you won't be able to do everything in just one playthrough. That's okay though, the game is designed to be played multiple times, with a total of 10 endings. You won't be starting from scratch each time either. Any items, weapons, or money that you have when you reach an ending will be stored at the local dojo for your other characters to use. Even some aspects of the world will carry over. If you decide to help build a language school, for example, as long as the school isn't destroyed, you'll be able to understand the foreigners in town. If you're just starting out, it's best to just go with the flow. Complete any events that you come across and try to reach one of the endings. The more events you see, the easier it is to make sense of the game's journal, allowing you to follow a specific branch more easily. Plus, each time you reach an ending, you'll be rewarded a title and points to spend to further customize your character. As stated earlier, if you've played any of the previous Way of the Samurai games, the combat is very similar. You have your basic light and heavy attacks, a block button, a sidestep, and a jump. This time, however, the stance you use is independent from your sword. Stances are what dictate your moveset. As you rank up in a stance, you'll unlock new moves and abilities while you're in it. This means combat is fairly simple early on. The push-pull system mentioned earlier can take some getting used to, but you can rely on your dodging skills just as well. At the bottom left is your health and vitality gauges, your item list, sword status, and spring harvest gauge. Vitality is new to the series. It can be used to heal yourself if you stay out of combat, use strong attacks, and fast travel. Your sword status will change colors as it becomes worn down until it eventually breaks. To prevent this from happening, you'll need to either sharpen it yourself or have the blacksmith polish your sword for you. Luckily, you can equip up to three weapons and easily swap between them in combat. To use spirit harvest, your meter in the center needs to be at least halfway full. When active, you attack faster and most of your attacks will break the enemy's guard. The more people you kill, the more the gauge will fill up to stay in this powerful state. I mentioned the blacksmith a moment ago, and he's fairly crucial to your success. Besides keeping your weapon from breaking, he'll offer to make your sword stronger or more durable so that it doesn't break as easily. Also, as you acquire more weapons, you can take them apart and build your own from parts here. This allows you to create your own signature weapon with the properties that you want. 
I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Way of the Samurai 4 is a great game. It has a ton of flaws and it has done little to push its series forward. In many ways, it looks and feels just like an old PlayStation 2 game. But that's not to say it doesn't have charm. I love that you can shout random things during story events, or just simply pull your sword out as they're talking, ending the conversation in a fight. But the fighting feels dated now. They haven't done much to improve it since the first game. As for the story, it can be hit or miss depending on the choices that you make. It can be wacky, it can be serious, or it can be dull, sometimes all in the same playthrough. It is interesting to play through one event from one side, then again from the other to see how things could have played out. There are also some fairly strict requirements for some of the paths. If you feel like you're getting the same endings over and over again, look up a guide to set you on the right path. That goes with the whole game, actually. If you're feeling bored or that you have nothing else to do, try looking up some stuff. There is a ton to do in the world, but unless you know it's there, you may not see much of it. There are various side quests in many games that have nothing to do with the main events. You can even set up your own dojo to recruit students. If you have loved the past games, you'll most likely enjoy Way of the Samurai 4. Even if you have the PlayStation 3 version, you might be interested in the PC port. Unfortunately, it has a few setbacks. The first is that the game is locked at 30 FPS. This is a deal breaker for some people, especially for an action game, even if it feels responsive enough. Second, there is no real graphics options. You're essentially getting an upscaled version of the PlayStation 3 game. That said, you can raise the resolution past 1080p, or even downsample to get a more clear image. Another thing to note is I do not recommend playing the game without a controller. Sure, you can rebind all of the keys, but I never found anything that I was comfortable with. The one feature I can recall missing from the PC port is Crossroads Killing. On PSN, your character data would be uploaded and transferred to another player's world where they would wander around. Players could then defeat them to acquire the custom sword that you had made in your own game. Instead, on PC you will sometimes come across your own characters that you have made. It functions the same way, but it would have been nice to see other players' creations populate the world. There really isn't anything else out there like Way of the Samurai. This is both good and bad for the game. It means even if it's not the best game it could be, it'll have its fan base, including me. But it also means that there hasn't been any major advances for the series. That said, even now I want to get back in and complete the few remaining endings I have left. If you're interested, the game retails for $25 or your regional equivalent, though it's currently on a launch sale for 20% off this week. If what you've seen looks interesting, give it a shot, even if you have to wait for a deeper discount.